as we get ready to roll. Ladies and gentlemen, a shower of big block power is about to send a shockwave in honor of the natural. It's the natural 77, and we are green at Thunder Mountain. Field works it down into turns number one and two here on the opening lap. Down on the bottom of the speedway, it's Williamson with the edge here into turn three on the opening circuit. Off of turn number four, it will be Matt Williamson leading lap number one. Tim Seager Jr. trying to make a move on the outside lane as they click off lap number one, trying to stay even with the Buzz Shoe Chevrolet car as they head down the back straightaway. Here's Seager's on the outside looking for the race lead as he heads up to the top, trying to get the momentum at the line. Though Williamson stays in lap two, but Timmer was a little bit closer. Can he make it work this time off the corner? It's close at the line. It's going to be Tim Sears Jr. as your race leader by about a bumper as they work off turn number two. Williamson going to stay right there. Phelps in third. Cody Higby fourth. Jack Laner rounding out your top five for the time being as they come off of turn number four. Once again, Timmer noses out just a little bit farther in that EMV Energy 83X. Yeah, so Tim Sears now puts Williamson back to the runner-up spot. Then it's Jimmy Phelps. Now we got a great three-car battle for the number four spot. Well, we got a three-car battle for the lead and right now nice and slippery all the way around the 3 8 mile here at Thunder Mountain and off a of turn four I'm going to say Matt Williamson's got the lead back and indeed he does. Williamson will lead lap 10 as they continue this side by side battle off turn number two. He'll nose back out ahead of that Bush Shoe Chevrolet number 88 machine. Here Sears back on the top side trying to come right back with the momentum is in favor of the 88. Yeah, Sears way up the bank that time off of corner number two down the back stretch will work to three. And now here comes the JB installations number 98H of Jimmy Phelps. Phelps now down to the inside of Sears. They'll work together down the home stretch. Phelps trying to inch his way by any inside lane as they go into turn number two. As Phelps will take the runner up position down the back straightaway and set his sights on the 88 of Matt Williamson. As they go down into turn number three and four, we'll see if Timber's got anything for Phelps. Looks like on the exit though, the bottom just, just a little bit better. Now Williamson steps up to try to get around Worthing on the outside lane. We'll see if Phelps can open the door on the inside and take the position away. As they take it down into the third turn, here it comes Jimmy Phelps. Now Matt Shepard. Let's make it a four-car dogfight for the top spot. Williamson looks to the outside of the 63 of Worthing into turn number one. Here comes Phelps. Shepard up to third now. Off of turn two. New race leader on the back straight away. Jimmy Phelps takes over as Matt Williamson slides up the banking in turn number one and two. He'll try it again in three and four, but the bottom right now the place to be and the B-Bell Bandit is set up there. He takes the lead on lap number 22. Williamson gets caught way to the top side. He's going to lose another position if he doesn't get back down to the bottom as Matt Shepard rolls side by side with him down into turn number three and four. So Shepard to the bottom off of turn number four. Shepard now into the runner up spot. So it's Phelps and Shepard. Then it's the 88 of Williamson. Williamson whoa, nearly comes together with the 83X of Tim Sears, but we stay green. And now some racing here right in front of your race leaders as Billy Van Indwigen steps out of line, battles with the number 28 of Matt Mead. He goes to the middle of the racetrack, and now Trottrell skates underneath of him as they come down the front stretch. Now Shepard, Shepard's going to try it, gets out of line. Here comes Matt Shepard. Shepard feeling racy there back there in the number two spot. Shepard tries something on the top, but is it going to come back to bite him as Williamson drives right down underneath him on the bottom? The two champions battle as they come down the front straightaway. Shepard going to lose the runner-up spot as they go into turn number one and two as he turns the wick up on the high side. Timber going to get by as well as they head down the back stretch. Yeah, so Shepard stepped out of line, tried something, and now he's got Laner to contend with. And so Matt Shepard tried to make a move there. Two laps to go for the driver out of Baldwinsville as he crosses the stripe. Two to go for Jimmy Phelps. Phelps going to bring him up into turn number one and two as he'll bring it through the corner. Williamson still staying there for the number two spot. Trying to make it stick, but he's about four car lengths off the back deck as they head down off of turn number three and four. White flag is out on the speedway this time. This is your parents. One lap to go. Jimmy Phelps. In honor of his friend, Dale Plank is about to pull this off in the natural 77. He'll bring it down through turn number three and four. For the first time since August of 2022, Jimmy Phelps is going to go to victory lane as he wins the natural 77. Second will be Matt Williamson coming across the line. Third is Tim Sears Jr. Fourth, the Herlock Auto and Speed Supply 9S of Matt Shepard. Ladies and gentlemen, up out of the car, the winner of the natural 77 honoring Dale Plank, the driver of the 98H, the Baldwin's Bill Bandit, Jimmy Phelps. This feels amazing. Obviously, you know, the Plank family are close friends of ours. Dale and Brandon have done an amazing job with our race team. And uh, 
you know, it was, a, it was a tough loss. This is definitely dedicated to him, Leslie, Brandon, Steve, every, the whole entire Plank family, and uh, I'm really, really proud to be up here. Well, you know, I mean, it, unfortunately, it, I, we worried it was going to lock down. I didn't think it was going to happen that quick, and uh, Timmer was able to roll the outside there pretty good for a while, and I thought, you know what, maybe we're going to have a racetrack here for quite a while, and uh, kind of latched down there, and uh, Matt just kind of got to the outside of a lap car, and there was just nothing out there. I mean, it was just fortunate for us. It went our way, and at that point, it was just ride around behind them guys and, you know, hope we didn't get tore up. And Because, uh, you know, at that point, we weren't going to go to the outside of them. So it was just really, at that point, just being patient and try not to overdrive, get your nose in where it didn't belong, get into a uke tire or something like that. But it worked out for us, and, uh, you know, just things have been rolling. I can't thank these guys enough. They've given us a really, really good race car, and it uh, feels really, really good to be back in uh, Superior Series victory lane.